thank uh, the chairman. Um, my district in upstate New York has actually a unique connection to Alaska. It was the home to William H. Seward, who resided in Auburn, New York. Seward served as Republican Governor, U.S. Senator, and Secretary of State under Presidents Lincoln and Johnson. But Seward was most notably responsible for the purchase of Alaska from Russia in 1867. I won't tell you for how much it was a bargain. At the time, the Alaska purchase was unpopular. It was actually known as Seward's Folly. Later in life, Seward was asked to name his greatest achievement, and he said, the purchase of Alaska, but it will take the people a generation to find out. It is hard for me to look at the proposal to place a mine in the watershed feeding area of Bristol Bay and not consider what future generations might think of us. On the one hand is the prospect of great wealth from exploiting natural resources resulting from mining efforts. That will last a few decades, uh, perhaps a generation, and then the mining company will be gone potentially leaving behind a huge hole in the earth and billions of tons of acid mine waste. Even if the company can do what so far no mining company has ever done in a wet environment and dig a massive open pit mine that results in no leaks, no accidents, no pollution, who can guarantee that the massive amount of waste left behind in the tailings dam will not leach out or that the dam itself will not fail? In 2010, a tailings dam holding mining waste collapsed due to heavy rain, releasing toxic sludge flooding nearby towns, killing 10 and injuring 120. In 1998 in France, a tailing dam collapsed, releasing sulfur, zinc, copper, iron, and lead into nearby farmland. A study of the, of the incident estimated that about 5,000 jobs were lost in the dam's failure and in aftermath. These are just a few examples of the potential failures that could occur in Bristol Bay. On the other hand, we have the returning wealth of salmon. They feed the earth in one of the most pristine locations in the world. They feed the people of the region, the last truly sustainable salmon-based culture left in the United States. Through the efforts of commercial fishermen, we too all get a chance to share in that bounty. The salmon of Bristol Bay who spawn in the rivers there are sustained resource that, if we do not destroy them, will be there for as long as we can see into the future. And although the area does compete with my beloved upstate New York for fishermen, it is a wonderful place to go fish. Bristol Bay's clean water economy supports one of Alaska's most natural and bountiful resources, the salmon, and will yield economic returns and generate revenue for far beyond the short-term economic impact of mining. Uh, and that will support jobs today, tomorrow, and in future generations, whereas mining and potentially its harmful environmental impacts will eliminate those future jobs supported by the fishing industry. If you hold these two prospects in the balance and weigh them in a scale uh, for what is best for future generations, the question is very simple and the answer very clear. Do we act for ourselves and then regret it after a generation, or do we embrace the sustained wealth and nature of nature that returns every year for our use as long as people live on the earth? Now, I do want to respect uh, the Chairman's process points, and they are well taken, and I do not dispute uh, his, uh, his uh, positive motives in this matter, but I do want to make just a few other points. I want to remind the members that EPA has begun their risk assessment in response to local pressure for the EPA to intervene. EPA was asked to take up the 404C process, which under the Clean Water Act gives EPA the power to protect water quality by establishing standards that can virtually veto development. EPA might be chided for taking on science-based watershed assessment rather than moving immediately to 404C, but I think the agency was trying to show everyone involved that they were willing to listen and study the issue thoroughly before acting. The draft assessment is solid science that demonstrates hard rock mining cannot coexist side by side with salmon without harm to the salmon, to the fishing and sportsman economy, and to the native communities. Claims that some magical technology can make all this work out have been made many times, and rarely does technology work the way it is promised. Mining is an inherently destructive and dirty business, and technology cannot make it clean and harmless. I certainly agree we need mining, and I am not an opponent of mining. But I think that we have to be honest with ourselves about where such projects can work and where they simply don't make sense. Finally, I believe the EPA should complete their assessment and then promptly move to take up 404C that gives everyone certainty that Bristol Bay and the surrounding rivers and lakes will remain pristine. If the EPA's 404C amounts to a preemptive veto of mining, then at least it will free up the mining companies and capital to turn to more promising locations for ore. A contemporary of Seward described him as, one of those spirits who sometimes go ahead of public opinion instead of tamely following its footprints. I hope members of this committee will be mindful of these words and of the example of William Seward as we explore the issues surrounding the development of the pebble mine. And I yield back the remaining three seconds of my time.